Hey everyone, my name's Kyle, and today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the FLL competition. So the competition is often referred to with the acronym FLL, which stands for First Lego League, which first in itself also being an acronym for, for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. Now that might seem like a mouthful, but basically the competition is a robotics-based competition. There are a few other aspects to it, but it aims to engage middle school age students in science, technology, engineering, math, and teach them skills such as building and programming, critical thinking, as well as some other skills like teamwork, community outreach, presentation, uh, sportsmanship, etc. And so that's basically what the FLL competition aims to do. Now the FLL competition is pretty unique because even though it's a robotics challenge focusing on math, science, technology, and all that fun stuff, there are actually three facets of the competition on which you will be judged. There's the robot game, but there's also the project presentation and core values. The first part of the competition is the robot game, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Every year, FIRST gives all of the teams a special challenge board, and it changes from year to year, but all teams will get the same challenge board. And the board itself is filled with all of these mission models which can be activated by a robot. And your objective is to build a LEGO Mindstorms robot to drive around autonomously on this mission board and complete as many of the missions it can in order to score points. And of course, the more missions you complete, the more points you score, the higher you will be on the leaderboard in the robot game. And of course, my channel is full of all kinds of resources and tutorials that you can use to help you incorporate some cool engineering design into your robot. Now each year the FLL competition has a new theme. In 2017 that theme happens to be hydrodynamics which has to do with water and the themes are usually fairly open-ended so you can go in a lot of different directions with them. And the robot games mission models are usually modeled after the theme so somehow. So in 2017 you can anticipate all the mission models to have something to do with water. Now, the theme of the year is also important for your project presentation, which is the next part of the competition. Each year, you and your team are required to do a research topic on the theme, in this case it's water hydrodynamics, and you need to identify some kind of problem that goes along with the theme. Then, with your team, brainstorm some kind of innovative solution that doesn't exist yet, and then you're going to be able to present your project to the judges on the day of the competition. And of course, the judges are going to be grading you on uh, how you address your problem, the thoroughness of the research done, the general presentation, how well you share it among all of your team members, and the originality and the creativity of your project. Now, the rubrics are, of course, on the first website, but this is just a general overview of how the project works. And the project is very important, and it counts just as much as the robot game does. And like I said, it's all going to be based on the theme. Now, a great thing that you could and definitely should do is share your project with other people in the community. As a matter of fact, when I was in middle school for Nature's Fury in 2013, we shared our project with the local Office of Emergency Management to get their feedback, and then we took their comments and their feedback and incorporated it into our own presentation. And so we made some adjustments there, and we were able to show the judges, look, we presented our project to these experts, this is what they said, and then this is what we adjusted in our project to make it a little bit more feasible. FIRST also has something called the Global Innovation Award, which is separate from the normal competition that you would otherwise do. And this allows you to submit the project presentation that you've made online for additional judging. And it's a kind of like a separate mini competition outside of the one where you have the robots, the judging rooms, and whatnot, because this will focus just on your project and it'll be completely online. And you'll be notified if you end up being a semi finalist or a finalist or whatnot. And that's always a, a cool avenue to go down. So I definitely recommend, if you feel confident in your project, submitting it to the Global Innovation Award. Last but not least, that brings us to the third facet of the FLO competition, which is core values. Now, all of the first competitions stress something called gracious professionalism. And this means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But in general, what it boils down to is good sportsmanship, working well as a team, working well with others who aren't in your team, uh, lending a hand to others who need help, 
and just in general just being good friendly people who honor the spirit of a friendly competition and it's always important to understand that what you win is not as important as what you discover and what you learn because really what we're here is to actually learn and grow as individuals and as engineers in our future. Back when I was in FLL, my team was very often recognized for outstanding core values and gracious professionalism because we would always do things like loan a spare wheel to another team who didn't have one and needed one. Or even one time when we were waiting online for the competition, a, another team member had asked us about our robot and how it worked and our team took the time to kind of stop and just explain to them all in detail about how our mechanism worked and they were very impressed and they were very pleased that we were willing to help them and explain to them. Core values are an extremely important part of the competition and every official there, whether it be a volunteer, a referee watching the robot game, or a judge in a judging room, they're all going to be looking out for any of these teams that really stand out in terms of core values and gracious professionalism. And I recommend that if any team has helped you, you can go to an official or fill out a form and recommend that team for a Gracious Professionalism Award. And it's, it's just a really nice thing to do. So always be good sports in this competition because it really will pay you back. So now that you know the three areas that you're going to be judged on, let's talk about competition day. When you get there, your coach will get a schedule and that will tell you exactly when your robot rounds are, but it'll also tell you when your judging room sessions are scheduled. Now in your judging rooms, they'll have different ones. They'll have a robot design judging room where you will demonstrate your robot and show off basically the physical robot that you've worked on. Uh, as well as the programs that you've written and they're going to be looking for technical expertise. They're also going to have a core values challenge where you and your team have to complete some kind of challenge together and it could be really anything. The challenge is different every time. I remember one year uh, they had us all stand on a rug that was upside down and our team had to turn the rug all the way around without a single person stepping off onto the tile floor. So that's, those are always very interesting and it's not necessarily important that you complete the challenge but they're looking to see how well you work as a team and how good your sportsmanship is. And then finally of course there's the project judging room. Now the most important part about the judging rooms is that it's all about you and your teammates. Your coach is not allowed to chime in and in the case of the core values in the robot design rooms your coach is not even allowed in the room. So the team has to speak for themselves and what the judge is really looking for is something called ownership. They want to see that the teammates, the kids themselves, actually did do all the work. If the coach just kind of built the robot while the kids were over in the corner eating potato chips the whole time, the judges will know because if the kids go into the uh, judging rooms and they don't know anything about the robot, then that's, that's a red flag right there. They're also going to be looking at the originality of their design. And I've said countless times, don't copy my robots for competition because the judges have seen this robot come through competition multiple times even though I've explicitly told people don't copy my robot for competition and they're going to see if you did indeed copy a robot and that's also going to be a flaw in ownership and they're going to see that that you weren't the one who worked on the robot however if you did borrow some ideas from somewhere else this would be a good time to credit them and that's always something that judges appreciate don't wholesale steal from somebody but you can borrow ideas and then give them credit while you're in the judging room and I have a, a whole other video dedicated to just that if you'd like to watch that. All three of the areas of competition that I discussed before are just as important as the last and you have to actively participate in each of them if you want to be in the competition. Now don't think you can just roll up to the competition one day and have the greatest robot in the world but not present a project. That's not how the competition works because they're really looking for whichever team has the best synthesis of all of the different aspects of competition. Who is good at building a robot, good at presenting their research and good sports and honor the spirit of a friendly competition. So at the end of the day they're going to compile all of the scores from the different parts of competition and they're going to find the overall winner and this is what they call the champions award. Now you might have the best robot but you might not win the champions award if your project suffers a little bit because the champions award is going to be the best the most well-rounded team that's out there who has uh, some pretty good core values a pretty good project and a pretty good robot 
but doesn't necessarily have to be the best in any one category. So focus on being well-rounded in this competition and honoring all aspects of the competition as opposed to just focusing on one at a time. So I think I've pretty much summed up all of the basics of the FLL competition. Did I miss anything? If I did, please leave a comment in the section below so my other viewers and I know if I left something important out. And be sure that you read the official handbook provided for the FLL competition each year. Because this video alone and the summary video for the robot game that they give you won't be enough to let you know about all of the specific rules that go into the competition. So make sure you read the handbook and you're completely familiar with all the rules. And remember, my YouTube channel is an excellent resource where you can learn about all different kinds of programming, building, and engineering techniques that will help you make your robot for the robot game. I wish you the best of luck on your competition journey this year in FLL, and I hope you not only learn a lot, but you have lots of fun during the process. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. If you have a suggestion for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.